In this video, we will cover what's new in shortcut version 24.06.26. Let's dive in. There are a number of new filters in shortcut and let's go through them one by one. The first thing is the drop shadow filter. It allows your text to have a drop shadow and to apply it, just click on add filter and search for drop shadow and you can see that. And this drop shadow allows you to adjust the X and Y so you can see the shadow whether it is up or down. Okay, let me move the screen bigger. And you can also adjust the blur amount as well. So it is very nice. The great thing about it is that you can also use it with keyframes so you can make that drop shadow move. Next up is the vibrance filter. The Vibrance filter is similar to the Saturation filter. However, the Vibrance filter has greater control and it allows you to maintain your skin tones better versus saturation. Furthermore, the Vibrance filter will also take into consideration the existing saturation. I'm going to add a Vibrance filter. And you can see there are different things that you can control. And Let's compare it with the saturation filter. The saturation filter only has one control, so you can enhance the uh, saturation slightly. However, with the vibrance, you can control it much better. For example, if you want uh, your skin tones to look better, you can do that. Again, it has keyframes as well, so you can create very nice effect with this. There are two changes in keyframes. One has been applied in the prior version of Shortcut, which is 24.04, .04, and that is the ability to undo. For example, if you have increased intensities and you want to undo that, you can click on Edit and Undo Changes to the Vibrance filter. Prior to the versions 24.04, .04, you can't do that. Uh, the Undo or the Redo function doesn't work in a lot of keyframes. But since 24.04, .04, this version now works. So you can do that. Now one other thing in new in version 24.06 is the scrub while dragging feature for keyframes. Let me show you by uh, using this uh, clip here. So I have a saturation filter and there's keyframes. So let's go to keyframes. Now scrub while dragging allows you to see what's on the screen as you scrub. At the moment it is turned off. So let's say you want to change this keyframe. Now you notice that when I drag the keyframe, the timeline doesn't move. What you see on the preview window also doesn't change. All right, so you can't see what's really happening on the screen at the moment. Now, if you turn on scrub while dragging, you notice that the playhead will follow uh, this keyframe. At the same time, what you see on the preview window changes as well. Alright, so you notice that? So you know at what point where say the saturation change for this particular video. If you turn it off, alright, so it doesn't change. So your scene on the preview window doesn't move. So this allows you to quickly adjust your keyframes and adjust the levels or the changes that you want. So this is a great feature that I can see. Next is Playlist. Let's head back on to the Timeline. Playlist has this new menu. Click on the menu and Columns. So now you have the choice to turn on or turn off a certain criteria. For example, for you, say the date of that clip might not be important, so you may not want to look at the date and it allows you to have more space on this playlist. For example, right now, it shows the clip, the in and out duration, the start and etc. But with this column now, you can turn off things that you do not require. For example, you might not need to have the clip name. You just want to see the thumbnail. Or perhaps you think that you do not need the date as well. You can turn it off. So it creates more space for you to look at the items in the playlist. But for different people, it might be different. For example, you may have, say, 10 different videos and you may want to know the date of that particular video. So for you, date might be important and perhaps other criteria might not be important. So that way you can be more efficient as you edit your video. There are also other fixes that may or may not affect you. One of it is Windows on ARM or Windows on using a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. 
So if you have a laptop or a computer that uses that chip, Shortcut will run on that software now. However, it is a beta at this point. There's no hardware encoder and some audio filters may be missing. So there are also support for AVIF uh, images. So this is the late, one of the latest image format that you can use in Shortcut as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and kept you updated with Shortcut. If you like it, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. If you haven't subscribed, do consider subscribing. Check out what's on the screen right now for the next video editing tip.